I've got my camera and my toys. Welcome to Fast Friday. Hi everyone, welcome to Pal to Tech. Today we're talking about the aperture dial on Fujifilm cameras and lenses. Well, mostly they're on the lenses, which is what makes using Fuji lenses so awesome. Now, as you know, Fujifilm does not use a PASM dial on some of their camera models. For example, this X-T4 or the X-T3. And because of this, they've put the aperture ring right on the lens itself. And from an ergonomic standpoint, this is one of my absolute favorite things about using the Fujifilm camera system. And that doesn't mean you cannot use a lens. Well, let me just say this. There are three types of lenses that you can use with Fujifilm cameras. Lenses that have an aperture ring that's clickable, or you can have an aperture ring that's completely clickless, right? Completely clickless and silent, like this one here. And lastly, you can have a lens on the camera that doesn't have an aperture ring on it at all whatsoever, like this one. We'll talk more about lenses without aperture rings in just a second. Now, as a very brief refresher, for those of you new to photography or new to Fujifilm and using a camera in manual or aperture priority mode, aperture refers to how large or how small the opening of the lens aperture blades are. The aperture ring on your Fujifilm camera has these little numbers on it right here. These are called f-stops and just to make it super confusing, they are completely backwards. The larger the f-stop number, the smaller the opening of the lens. Likewise, the smaller the aperture ring number, the larger larger the opening of the lens. Now, obviously, the larger you have your aperture open, the more light that you are allowing to hit your camera sensor. And with that, the less areas of your scene that are gonna be in focus. The smaller the aperture, the less light, and the more areas of your scene are gonna be in focus. Now, a handy way to remember this is simple. If you have a large aperture opening, say f2.8, you are letting in a large amount of light into the camera, and you're gonna to get a large amount of background blur. Likewise, if you have a small aperture opening, you are letting a small amount of light into your camera and you're gonna have a small amount of background blur. Now here's something else that I think can help you understand the f-stop numbers. Remember that they are fractions. You remember those things from math class, right? Fractions, for example, I have before me a homemade chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> this is absolutely delicious and I'd like to have the whole thing, but I'm not going to because I'm gonna demo aperture on it, okay? <laughs> so if I set my aperture ring to F2, that's one half. Think of that as one half. Let's get one half of the cookie. And think of it as I'm letting in less light. But what happens if I set the aperture to F4? Even though the number four is larger than the number two on the lens, remember, it's a fraction. So one quarter is smaller than one half. Likewise, we're gonna get less cookie. And trust me when I tell you, F4 is smaller than F2. Now let's put it to F8. Now at F8, that is a much smaller amount of light we are letting hit the camera sensor. And that creates two problems. First, you'll have to increase the ISO. I hope the loop with the star speed, which means you probably shouldn't try and talk and do YouTube videos when you have something in your mouth. F8 never tasted so good. Now, on the Fujifilm camera system, to set your aperture, you simply rotate the dial to the desired f-stop. At this point, the camera will definitely use that aperture no matter what. And if you want the camera to choose your aperture for you, then simply put it into A for automatic. Now, remember that when you're setting a fixed aperture, you're doing so because you want to specifically control the amount of area of your scene that's in focus. For example, if I want more of Thanos in focus, I simply simply rotate my aperture down from f16 to f2, and you'll see that the background goes blurry. If I rotate it back to f16, more is in focus, and less attention is on your foreground subject. Now, there's a little issue, or a quirk I'll call it, on Fujifilm cameras, where you don't really get an easy way to see a preview of your depth of field. Let me explain. For example, you set your ISO to a fixed value, you set your shutter speed to a fixed value, and then you look through the viewfinder and you start to rotate your aperture aperture ring. Now, while you're turning your aperture dial, you can see your depth of field. In other words, the areas of your shot that are going to be in focus. And that's really handy if you want to judge exactly what's going to be in focus in your scene. But here's the issue. 
if you have your ISO dial set to A for automatic and you have your shutter speed set to A for automatic. If you set it like that and you go to rotate the aperture dial, watch what happens. I'm gonna rotate the dial from F2 now back to F8, just like I did before. Have a look at this. Nothing's happening, you see that? So basically there's no aperture preview when you have everything else in automatic and you're trying to adjust your aperture settings. However, it is available in manual mode. In other words, if you have the other dials set to a fixed value and you rotate your aperture ring, you can see a depth of field preview. So in cases like this, you want to enable a button to show you your depth of field preview. It's sort of a toggle switch. Here's how to turn it on. Just press and hold down the DISP button button until the menu appears. Once it does, go ahead and choose the button you want to assign it to. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to assign it to the auto exposure lock button on the X-T3. But just to be clear, you can assign it to any button you want. Look for the choice that says preview depth of field. And you'll see that it looks like a little set of aperture blades. Okay, now, if you have everything in auto and you start to rotate your aperture ring, as I'm rotating it, look, Nothing's happening. You see that just like before. Now I'm gonna press the button that I assigned and it functions like a toggle switch so you don't need to hold it down. Just press it once, boom. And look at the upper left corner of the screen. You see that right there? Now when I turn the aperture ring, have a look at this. You see that? Now suppose you don't want to use the aperture ring on your lens and you instead want to control your aperture using the front command dial on the camera. All you need to do is set your aperture ring to A for automatic and it's button dial setting, aperture ring setting. You see that right there? It's normally set to auto. That's the default behavior. Change it to command. Now you can use the front command dial to change the aperture setting. If it's not working for you, try the following. Press and hold down the front command dial until you see this menu right here and make sure that you've got aperture selected in the choice. And lastly, in the button dial setting area of the menu, you will see a grayed out section called aperture setting. You see that right there? It is always grayed out when you have any lens attached to your camera that already has an aperture ring on it. But what about lenses that don't have aperture rings like this Viltrox 85 millimeter? That is where this setting comes in handy. As soon as you put a lens on the camera that does not have an aperture ring, that setting will become active you see that right there? And inside it, you have three choices, auto and manual, auto or manual. These menu settings specifically control how the camera talks to the lens and it uses the front command dial. If you have it set to auto plus manual, you have the most flexibility. When you go to take your shot, you can rotate the front command dial to change your aperture. You see that? And as I'm cycling through, I can see the f-stop numbers, but as I get to the end of rotating it all the way to the right, I finally get to the last setting, which is automatic. Now, it's the same thing as if I had set a normal aperture ring in A for automatic. So again, this setting right here allows you to use the front command dial to either set fixed aperture settings or you can set the automatic setting simply by rotating the ring. However, if you set it to automatic, now rotating the front command dial does absolutely nothing. It's always in automatic mode. Your aperture is always set to automatic. Not very flexible, but if you always have your aperture in automatic, it's one less thing to worry about having to turn and knock when you're using the camera. And finally, when you set it to manual, it does exactly what you think it does. Rotating the front command dial sets the aperture to a fixed value, except there's no automatic. It goes to either the widest aperture all the way down to the smallest aperture, and that's it. So basically, when you you think about it, it's actually best to just leave it in auto plus manual whenever you're using a lens that doesn't have an aperture ring on it. That'll give you the most flexibility. Well, thank you so much for watching and I really hope you found the video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I'm going to be signing off now, but have a wonderful weekend and I will catch you in a new video next week. Take care.